Next Tech. I am calling you because you made the worst decision of your meaningless life. Drafting me would have been better for your terrible franchise. You are so dumb. My name isn't even Argentino. You better watch yourself. I'm watching you. So I just got off the phone with Dimitri Argento. You heard his displeasure with the Vancouver Canucks organization and myself. Oh my god, he is not happy that we skipped over him in the draft. We took Joe Gattenby second overall and we let him slip to number three to go to the Arizona Coyotes. So welcome back, guys. That was hilarious. I want to thank Video Game Ace on Twitter for creating that. That was hilarious. But Argento, not very happy and a lot of people saying I messed up big time uh, and I believe you I definitely do but I am very happy with my choice Joe Joe Gattenby is still gonna be hopefully upwards of 90 overall for our squad he's four and a half stars he's a great defenseman yes maybe Argento is gonna be a couple higher overalls maybe his trade value is gonna be a little bit higher but I I'm happy with my choice it's already been made we can't go back Past is the past for a reason. You can't change it. So let's just go ahead and make the best of what we have right now. So first thing I want to do is I want to edit the Utica comments line before I do anything. So they have Ellers, McCann, and Hunter Shankarik. So Jared McCann is actually 82 overall. So is he ready for the NHL? That is the question. He had a great year last year. I almost don't even want to break up that line because he, he was playing so well. But if he is like a third line or a fourth liner, I will have to play him in the NHL this year. So we might have to make some trades here. Uh, and of course, oh my god, he is a third line. He's ready to play. He is ready to play in the NHL. So we have way too many centermen. Way too many. Oh boy, okay, so we're going to call him up. We're going to send down Lyndon Vey. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look here. Um, that's the way it's going to be for there. Uh, best lines for the Vancouver Canucks. So Vanek, Johnson, Yakupov, that's the way it's going to be. If I knew we were going to have such a such a large amount of centermen, maybe getting Tyler Johnson wasn't the best idea, but we need a star player. We need someone to put the puck in the net. So I'm, you know what? I'm all right with Tyler Johnson. And if if it gets to the point where he uh, doesn't fit anymore, we could just trade him. You know, I know that's not something that is ideal to trade a star player like this, who's got, who obviously has has such a large contract, but um, it, we have so many centermen and not enough wingers, so I think Darren Helm's going to straight up have to go. Oh, man, that would actually be perfect if we didn't have Tyler Johnson. Um, okay, so let's just hypothetically say Alexander Semin is completely gone. He's no longer on this team. Uh, say he's gone, though. So semin has gone, and then we put uh, Jared McCann. Okay, so McCann, who else we want gone? We want Helm is going to be traded, so we're going to scratch Helm there, and Morrissey, no, we don't want you there, we want Jared McCann, so ideally, I want it to look something, we just have too many centermen, that's the thing, uh, it could be something like this, and then get, uh, get rid of, uh, Fontaine, get rid of both of these guys, to be honest with you. So get rid of Fontaine. We're going to scratch Fontaine. And we're also going to scratch Yuri Seacash. So we have pretty much a whole fourth line there. Oh, okay, so I we, we could play Killorn on the fourth line and get a third line scorer um, and then have Vertan, or we could even do this. We could trade Helm for like a second liner and then we could have Matthews and Horvat there. Playing Horvat on the wing isn't the worst thing in the world. He is a good centerman. He's a really good centerman actually, but I don't want to ruin Austin Matthews. In my mind, Austin Matthews is way more important than Bo Horvat's going to be for this team. So if Horvat, you know, he doesn't get uh, 10 more points because he's playing on the wing, I'll be fine with that. But we are going to give him power play time. We're going to give him uh, the center position on the power play. So that's kind of my thoughts for there. We're also going to put uh, Vertanen on the power play there. 
Uh, Edler, that's good there. So, we definitely have some trading and some shopping to do. So, we need a second line left winger. We need a fourth line centerman and a fourth line right winger. So, uh, we're going to go best lines and we're going to do some preseason trades here. Or, we're going to go to the uh, go to the free agency. And, uh, okay, so obviously Ryan Johansson is still available. Uh, he has not come to a contract solution with the Columbus Blue Jackets yet, which is absolutely shocking. That's just absolutely ridiculous how they haven't come to a contract solution yet. Some team has to come in and do a crazy offer sheet. Uh, same with, with JT Miller. And you're probably saying, oh, go get JT Miller. What are you doing? I don't think he's going to stay 87 overall. I've seen players get up to 87 and they drop right back down to like 84. So I think that's kind of the issue with, J with JT Miller. And I think there's some better options out there. So we're shopping for our fourth line right now and uh, Colin Greening would he be a decent fourth liner his overall is a little bit low he is cheap though which I do like he has decent discipline decent stats anyways he's put up 20 points in the NHL before so maybe getting Colin Greening for the third line left wing wouldn't be the worst thing his defensive awareness isn't fantastic again it's not the ideal option but we uh, we're gonna go do some shopping here so we're gonna go ahead and I have a player in mind that I kind of want to go look at and that is Anthony Duclair from the Arizona Coyotes so let's see what Darren Helm's trade value is worth and it's actually not that bad so Darren Helm must have a trade Alexander Semin as well so that's going to be a hard player to trade uh, pretty much Alexander Semin if I can get like a fourth liner I think the best way here is to look at players who are being given away so maybe there's like a fourth line grinder like a Steve Ott you know but that's really not the ideal player his discipline isn't isn't that great we're gonna say no to Steve Ott so uh, Joel Ward okay Joel Ward got the decent discipline Joel Ward's a really good hockey player he's not a, a fourth liner at all Rafi Torres that is the that's the discipline that we definitely do not want bring him back to Vancouver I'm gonna have a look here I'm gonna have a look around the NHL and hopefully I can find somebody uh, to go ahead and fill that void on the fourth line and then we'll get to dealing Darren Helm so hold on a second here let me try to go shopping I'm going to look around the NHL and the only fourth liners that I could see, we could bring up Lyndon Vey or we could go to Buffalo and we could get Legwand. Legwand is, you know, is he a better option than Lyndon Vey? I really don't know about that. His discipline's nice. I like him because he's, he's, you know, he's got 1,200 games of NHL experience. He's been around the block. Uh, he could be a good playoff guy to have on the fourth line there. Or do we just go with Lyndon Vey, who we have had in the past? Obviously, definitely not ideal, but he's still there. He's he's an option, you know. He's definitely someone that we can use. 26 years old. Discipline's 90. You know what? I like Lyndon. We're probably not going to shop for a centerman. I like Lyndon, Lyndon Vey. He's got the 90 uh, discipline there. I think he's going to be our fourth liner for a, for a quite a, a while here. So let's actually just go ahead and shop Darren Helm. So I'm looking at a few teams here. And Arizona is a team that's pretty interesting. Uh, because aside from Hansel, and that's pretty much it. They have Hansel and Lewis. I think at this team is missing is a second line centerman. Vermette's not that player anymore. Trevor Lewis definitely is not. And you look at some expendable wingers they have and it's not going to be Max Domi, but it could be Anthony Duclair. He's got the four stars. He's young. He's ready. He's got one year left in his contract. He's ready to have a breakout year. I think getting Duclair would be nice. It kind of fills a void for both teams, although it's not a quote-unquote realistic trade, but we're definitely going to have to add something to it. I would have no problem adding a second from next year and a third from this year. So that's giving them the trade value that Duclair was probably worth as well as giving them Darren Helm, which they definitely need. They're both in contract years, so it's definitely going to be a proving year for both of these of these players. This right now fills the void for our team, fills the void for the Coyotes. I mean, they have lots of other prospects. They have Perlini, they have Max Domi, Tobias Ryder, Dylan Strom. Like, they're stacked for prospects. So I think getting rid of Anthony Duclair isn't going to hurt them that bad. So I'm going to try to pull this trick. So we're going to go Anthony Duclair for Darren Helm, a second and a third. That might be a bit of an overpayment, but I am totally okay with it. Will it go through? Absolutely. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth as it were, so Arizona gladly accepts a particular proposal of yours. Perfect. So now these three players have to go. So 
uh, we have to find a team with lots of cap that wants Alexander Semin. That's going to be a really hard trade to make. So let me see if I can squeeze a deal here with Colorado. Honestly, give me anything. Give me a fourth round pick. I will be happy with that or a prospect that you're giving away. Someone with minuscule trade value. 74 overall, defenseman, three red stars. I'll take him. Wickstrand. I think we actually had Wickstrand before. That rings a bell. Uh, Wickstrand for Alexander Semin. Semin had a pretty good year last year, 49 points, 26 goals, but uh, he dropped down to 81, got the big contract, two years left on it, I'll be more than happy to get Wickstrand for Alexander Semin, no, they do not want to do that, unfortunately, so what can I add, I can give you Fontaine as well, no, too many players, uh, if I add Fontaine, give me like your worst player, um, McLeod, that won't even go through, he's got the cap, give me uh, this guy, so will that go through? I mean, I can't, um, I don't know what else to do here. This go through, uh, Fontaine, nor, I might have to add a pick, to be honest. I really don't want to add a pick. Uh, yeah, it's not going to go through. We might have to put Alexander Semin on waivers and kind of just, uh, cut what we have. But would you go Wickstrand for Fontaine? That's just another, uh, another contract we don't have to pay this year. And Wickstrand is still pretty young. I think he's, like, he's 23. So, uh, this is kind of getting rid of a player for maybe a player that'll turn out. Will that go through? There you go. So, we got Fontaine. Now, we're still looking for a fourth line right winger though we're still looking for that so I gotta find gotta find a way to make a trade like that go through Maybe going after Luke Glendening would not be a bad move at all. Luke Glendening is uh, still relatively young, 28 years old. He's kind of capped out at like 81. He could go up to 82 or 83. Look at his defensive category. I love it. The senses are looking really good. I like this guy. I would not mind having Luke, Luke Glendening on the fourth line right wing. Would you take him for Cash so I can stop pronouncing this guy's name wrong? I don't think that'll go through, but we can try it. No, not going to work. So I'm going to have to add something really small here. Uh, since we got Wickstrand, I can add Stewart, plus they want him. Mackenzie Stewart is pretty much in the exact same boat that Wickstrand is. Uh, give me, again, your worst player. Give me Lashoff. I'll take him. Lashoff and Glenn Denning for Yuri Seacash, pretty much. No. Come on. I'll give you a fifth and, and a sixth on top of that just to get Luke Glenn Denning. Will it go through? There you go. A done deal. Okay, so now we can actually start. We can have a look at our team. Those are two trades that uh, I actually looked in the comments because I was so confused on who to on who to go trade for, and someone told me to get Luke Glendening. So thank you for the suggestion there, Alexander Semin. I'm just gonna straight up put him on waivers uh, as of right now. I'm just gonna scratch him, and then we will put him on waivers once the uh, whole waiver thing is all over with. So Alexander Semin's gonna be scratched, and we're gonna bring in there just to have the skaters necessary. Okay, so I called up Lyndon Vay. We're gonna have to put him on the fourth line right there. You're going to go there, Duclair, uh, Matthews, Horvat, Hansen, McCann, uh, Vertanen, Killorn, Vey, and Glendening. So I like that much better. That feels that feels good. The only thing I don't like is playing Bo Horvat on the wing, but it's we're, honestly, we're strapped. Straight up, we're just strapped. Um, that's just the wit. This is what we're going to have to do. We've got Anthony Duclair, though. I'm hoping for big things from Duclair. Uh, Jared McCann, Jake Vertanen, that looks all good to me. Defensively, it's going to look like that. Hutton, Morrissey, Luke Shen. Uh, there you go. And then power play is going to look something like this. I'm going to... And on the power play, I do have to put Bo Horvat. I promised Horvat to get the power play, so he is going to get those power play minutes. Uh, really quick here, we're going to go put him on the power play. Austin Matthews. You know what? You can go there. You can go there. That looks good to me. Tanev, Morrissey, Edler, Lindholm. Four-man power play. I do want to give uh, Jake for Tannen some sort of ice time, so instead of Vanek on the four-man power play, we are going to go ahead and put Jake for Tannen there with Austin Matthews and then uh, Johnson and and Yakupov. Four on four lines, that all looks good. All that looks totally fine. Tower Johnson, Ben Bishop, and Andre Vasilevsky. And the shootout, we have to add a player here, and I will go ahead and I will add Austin Matthews. So Johnson, Yakupov, Vanek, Duclair, and Austin Matthews. There we go. We are set, finally. I didn't think that it would be that hard to trade those players, but I'm happy with how everything is looking now. So I want to check one thing here that might screw up something, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Is Ivan Provorov a top six defenseman? He is. Okay, so I have to make the choice. Provorov, you're coming up. Hutton, you're going down. 
Hutton, that's all. That's it, buddy. You have to you have to go down. I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, Ivan Provorov, you're getting that right there. And I got to put him on the team. And then we can maybe get the first month of simulation done. Or at least the first few games here. Um, hold on. Let me go ahead and put Provorov there. We got to put Alexander Semen on waivers as well. So lots of stuff going on. By the way, this can be the first of two GM modes you are seeing today since I haven't had one up for like three days. So I felt bad about that. So you're going to get two today. We're all right, so I'm just about skipped over the preseason here. I thought I would just show you guys the tail end of it here. We are currently four and one. Uh, oh, okay, we get we ended off four and two. Tower Johnson, four goals. Austin Matthews, seven helpers there. So first things first, we have to put Alexander Semin on waivers. Yeah, there it is. Waiver waivers will be starting in effect October seventh. So on the Saturday, they're going to be uh, affected, and we are going to do that right now. Before before anything else, before we start the simulation, Alexander Semin, you're going on. On waivers I hope you get picked up but if you don't you know what whatever we'll uh, place you in the minors and you can just play there so Alexander Semin are you being picked up no no one wants Alexander Semin that's fine uh, we're gonna go like this the one thing I'm kind of concerned about is not having is not having a first line centerman in the AHL so maybe getting another prospect down the middle would not be the worst thing I could trade one of our prospect wingers that we have easily so so we'll, maybe we'll look at that in the next episode. But there is our team going forward. Hopefully, yeah, my GM skills are there. We're ready to go. We got Ben Bishop. Again, those are the two trades. Sorry, the three trades that we made. Acquiring Anthony Duclair for Helm, a second and a third. And then we traded uh, we traded Fontaine for Wickstrand. Then we got rid of Seacash, Mackenzie Stewart, and two picks for Luke Glendanning and Brian Lashoff. So let's get game number one underway against the Edmonton Oilers. Oilers first period, one nothing. Connor McJesus scores on Ben Bishop, 18 shots, boys, come on, period number two, one one. Anthony Duclair in his Vancouver Canucks debut scores a huge goal, tying the game up at one on the power play here, oh, David Moss of all people, I didn't even know he was still playing, I thought he was playing in like, in like the KHL, uh, the Oilers are going to take the first game from us, four to one, they get three goals in the third period, 11 more shots than us and Ben Bishop in his first game looking a little bit shaky but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, let's get the first month of simulation completed and then we will go ahead and cut this video off and then I'm going to do another episode right after this because I love doing GM mode. We started 0-2 what's going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa not okay. 0-3 guys, 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 guys let's get it together here. Let's get a big victory up against the Hawks. Come on. 0-3 not cool. There you go. You beat the Hawks Horvat had a big night there. Looks Looks like he's leading our team offensively, so playing the wing might not be a bad thing. Uh, but you know, obviously, uh, it's very early on. But so far, so good. Not for our team though. Uh, one and four. Okay, come on here. Let's go ahead and let's uh, let's win some games. Let's just win some games. Vasilevsky has the only victory. Ben Bishop does not have a win yet. There he goes. Beats the Florida Panthers. Beats Luongo and the Florida Panthers to get his first victory in a Vancouver Canucks uniform. Okay. All right. So Duclair, two goals. Bo Horvat, four. Honestly, we're not going to look too much into that. Another victory there. Maybe just had a really rocky start. Uh, I'm looking for big things out of Thomas Vanek as well. That's a couple of victories in a row. He's got four goals. Bo Horvat has six helpers. There you go. We seem to be doing all right here. There you go. Five and four. Just a weird start. Now we seem to have our uh, seem to have our skates under us now. The balances are going our way. So let's get one more game done here against uh, Corey Schneider and the New Jersey Devils. And we pull out a victory. And that is going to be the first month of simulation. Started off really bad. But six, five, and one. Um, so let's quickly go ahead and check out the first month here. Here. We are 12 points, whatever, still really early on. Uh, goals, we are probably tied for like uh, like 10th or something like that. Assists, we're again probably tied for like 10th. Uh, points, Joe Pavelski just crushing it right now. But nothing from us right now. I will see you guys in the next one. You're going to be watching it right after this one. So go check the channel. It will be up ASAP. We're going to get a lot more simulation done. And I'll see you guys then.